Okay, so welcome to lecture three for Sexology Challenges and Opportunities. As you can see on the slide, we're looking at the introduction to sexual difficulties tonight. Okay, so the, um, the, the term that we're talking about tonight, or the language that I'm going to invite you to use, is sexual difficulties. However, our diagnostic manuals, the DSM-5, which is the new replacement of the DSM-4 text revision, and the ICD-10, which is predominantly used in Europe and within some of the med, uh, medical systems, the hospital systems here in Australia, they, they use clinical language like disorders and dysfunctions. Tell me what's difficult about this. What are some of the potential problems that might exist with this language? The jargon. The jargon, yep. Thanks, Vicky. It's sort of demeaning to clients. Yep, so Kate's saying it's demeaning to clients, yep. Anything else? That's too precise, says Fiona back home. Dana says labelling. Yep, absolutely. So as Claire's offering online, yep, we tend to be pathologising. And that's, that's part of the reason that we want to be very aware of the deliberate use of language. Okay, so how can we talk about sexual difficulties without talking about sex? Is it possible to do? In the first Impossible, says Christian in the room. Uh, we've got food as a response from Claire online. I'm not quite sure why that is. <laughs> and we've got relationships from Crystal. It is impossible to talk about. For me, this kind of, um, kind of thinks about the fact that we've got all these models and frameworks, and we've talked about them during Sexological Practice 681. You would know them from previous training. And I'm wondering which ones come to mind for you, which are, are useful and important for you to actually think about. I'm going to go to people back home first before people in the room. So tell me, using either the, your voice or your typing, uh, what sort of models and frameworks come up for you? Yep, great, explicit, Jessica. What else? Narrative, yep, absolutely. Rogerian, thanks, Asaya. And welcome, Asaya. And I've even got your name right. <laughs> yep, CBT, health beliefs. And there's one more that I think probably really stands out. Trans-theoretical? Trans-theoretical, absolutely. And I talk about trans-theoretical a lot when I'm talking with clients. Because we're talking about a change process. And I also want to make sure that I always debunk the relapse. Okay, so your first exercise for the night. I would like you to draw the Masters and Johnson sexual response cycle. For some of you that will be really easy, for some of you it might not be so easy. So get out a pen, see if you can draw it. Then I want you to explain each aspect. And I'm not going to ask you all to do that, but I will ask for volunteers in a moment. And then the third part of that is I'm wanting you to name the three most, or three of the most well-known sexual response cycles. And someone is drawing on my slide. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever that is. Oh, we've got two people doing that. Please keep going. That's great. I could actually put in a blank page. There you go. You should be able to draw on that now. I should have inserted a whiteboard page for you. Yeah, there you go. We're certainly seeing elements of the sexual response cycle there. Oh, that one's... Whoever's got the yellow going on... <laughs> I'm not sure who's got the black, that's looking a little bit... Oh no, that's actually a word, I thought it was looking a bit like a pink. Excitement. Excitement, yep. Okay. Whoever says down the bottom is a good one, but it's almost a little bit round the other way. It's almost a little bit in reverse. So, Asaya, is this you down the bottom here with resolution, plateau, orgasm? Oh, it's you, Crystal, okay. Some actually got a straight line, that's impressive. <laughs> okay, just to interrupt us for one sec, we've had Reka join us all the way from Istanbul. Welcome, Reka. What I'm wanting you to do is to think about the four P's, try and identify and explain what they are. Make a preliminary diagnosis including specifiers. And identify any further information required to understand Marion's situation better. Yep, so both in the room and back home we've identified predisposing as she, uh, it appears that she had experience before 
the pain's the pain's been there. Is it is it lifelong? Seems to be. Seems to be lifelong. Okay. Good inclusion of the word seems to be. Okay. Good. Okay. What else? What's precipitated this presentation to us? Most likely, and what else? She wants to change. She, she wants to have a relationship with the boyfriend that she's been with for three years. Yep. So there's there's something about the relationship. We don't know that from this, this text here, but perhaps it's moving to in a whole new level. Okay. Uh, so Lee's Torn's had on here before that again. One of the protective factors, of course, is a partner. Yeah, it's a major protective factor within this case. Uh, yep, great. As Kristen said, partner, and she is actually helping. She's actually seeking help. Okay, another really important factor. What other information do we need? What else is going to assist us? <coughs> Absolutely. We need to make sure that she's had a medical assessment to rule it out. But you said she has. Yep. It's down there in the bottom. She's putting herself in a situation. Yes, she does. That's right. She's been seeking help previously because she's seen her GP. That's right. I'm just gonna, but GPs don't always know what they're looking for or they're not always the best people to see. I suppose that's my yep. specialist. She, that's a yes. Okay, great. So she probably benefit from seeing a specialist. And yeah, Inga, I think you're right there. We want to know, know more about her culture, her family history, her personality, familial messages around sex, around being sexual. Communication in the relationship. Communication within the relationship. Thanks, Zoe. Uh, other relationship history, where the pain is, what it feels like, any time it occurs, all really important. She what has, other treatments she has she had? not been abused sexually at any time. It says that she hasn't. That's right. Okay. So we, we can rule that out. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we don't ask her about that? No. We do ask her about that, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Inga, I agree with you. Referrals are often not worth the paper they're written on. <laughs> Absolutely, you're yeah, right, unless it's for me. <laughs> and I'm going to hand over to Jacqueline Kenny.